So thank you guys for coming to take a yin yoga practice with me today. Hopefully you've got a nice uh, space to do your practice where you um, will have minimal distractions. Um, we always know that no matter where we take a yoga practice or meditation, um, that there will be um, stimulus from the outside world, from whatever environment we find ourselves in. And part of the practice is that sort of going inward, the dulling down of the senses that reach out into the environment for information. So know that there will be distractions, whether it's the temperature in the room gets too cold, or there's noise outside that you're not sure what it is. If you feel relatively safe in your space, then we don't have to reach out and figure out um, all these little things. And we don't have to attach to these sensations. We can just be aware that they're there and um, stay within ourselves. So let's start breathing really well and, and softening the body and sort of just settling in, sort of checking in um, this sort of internal experience. So in your comfortable seat with whatever props you've needed to um, help you sit comfortably, think about this, this base of a statue, of maybe the statue of Buddha, and how solid and heavy it would be at its base. And then the spiritual nature of that heart is lifting and expanding upward and outward take our own body into that sort of state of being. Light and spiritual and airy, yet really rooted and strong in where we are. Another benefit of letting the heart rise is we've created all this space in the torso and through the belly and the ribs and the chest to breathe really well. And we're gonna have a really good pranayama practice um, during our asanas today. And now let's just take a journey through your own body, starting maybe from the tips of the toes all the way up to the crown of the head and notice where you're holding on to tension. I'll often mention that we're looking for those patterns, those tendencies in our own bodies where we kind of get resistant and tight and we've got some scar tissue and some buildup from old aches and pains. And so we start to become aware of those. And it, that's the process of that going inward, that self-exploration. And then when we start to slow the breath and quiet the mind, and those places are now free to start to soften and open up and relax because we're mindful. We recognize that those tendencies are there. We recognize those tensions where they reside. And then we can move past that. We can move through that into something deeper, more meaningful. And that can really change the experience of the yoga asanas or postures themselves. Now, if you would very specifically take your attention to the lower jawline, softening both hinges of the jaw, letting the muscle that is the tongue rest letting the breath move easily in and out of the nose, letting the eyes be soft. If the eyes are open, the gaze is soft on the floor in front of you. If the eyes are closed, we resist attachment to the visual pictures in the movie screen of the mind. The forehead is wrinkle free. Settle into this natural, easy breathing. If you'd like to join me, we'll find Anjali Mudra first. Press the palms softly against one another and make a nice connection with the heart center. Maybe a gentle lowering of the chin together if you want to join me three long inhales and exhales and then on that fourth inhale we'll chant the sound of home. So 
more inhale for the sound of home. Beautiful. When you're ready, softly open the eyes and release the hands. I want you to be sure to continue full, good pranayama, full yogic breath, belly, ribs, and chest expanding and contracting not only in the postures themselves, but as much as we can in that transition time as well. So the first asana or posture we're gonna take is gonna be on a hatha or melting heart. Uh, we might need some props for this. If you don't have enough props for this, go ahead and take child's pose instead because I think that might be um, reasonable even if you didn't have any props or had minimal props. So what does melting heart look like? And before we get there, go ahead and move around a little bit as I um, take us into variations, modifications, etc. So in melting heart, we're on our knees. So again, if you don't have enough padding underneath the knees, go ahead and add something here. We leave the hips directly over the knees. And um, so sort of like a happy puppy pose, we leave the rear end in the air and we drop or melt the back of the heart into the earth. And the chin comes to the floor and gaze forward. Now, if that chin to the floor is too much, take one cheek at a time or take the forehead. For support, some options, we might roll up that blanket to give a little lift under the chest, right? A little bit of support, that might be nice. And again, the chin or the forehead on the floor, leaving the hips up and we get a nice slope in the back. So a nice, gentle back bending posture that is melting heart. The energy of the heart has this downward energy into the earth beneath us. And we again want to make sure that we're breathing really well and surrendering into the posture as time goes by. It is, as most postures will be, a five minute hold. So again, if the supports don't prove to be enough, ease yourself out and then maybe bring yourself back in or just shorten the posture and take less time in the pose. Big deep breathing as the tailbone stays upward, the lower back, the mid back, the shoulders all sort of really melting into this nice curve. You breathe deeply and surrender. Surrendering the heart. Softening the expression on the face, the fingers and the toes. Just about two and a half minutes in. <laughs> Maybe in this particular posture, thinking about Anahata Chakra, that energy center um, behind the heart, the spinning wheel green. Maybe even generating some warmth in your own chest as you keep your focus on the heart, the energy of your heart, that loving spirit, that center of connection to others. So again, the visual of the color green or the warmth in the chest, anything that helps bring your focus into Anahata Chakra, that energy center at the heart. You're just at three and a half minutes. 
Again, maybe you had chosen to have some support underneath the chest. Maybe you're able to now, after settling, to start to move that support away. Take yourself deeper. Again, riding that edge of I'm uncomfortable, but I can still breathe and I can still relax in this state of discomfort. However, you might, might find yourself in a place of very um, anxious thoughts and um, gripping tense muscles. And when we do that and we don't adjust, then we sort of um, defeat the purpose of the, the yin yoga practice. So if we come into places where we have um, great anxious thoughts or great anxiety in the, mus the muscles of the body, ease yourself out because if you don't respond and relax yourself for a moment, you're losing the benefit of the posture. So respond to your body when in mind when you become very anxious and gripping into that pose. You're taking your last several deep breaths here. And then when you're ready, as you begin to rise up, you might rise up, you might find it easier to just straighten the legs and take forward rest. You might come to hands and knees and take your cat cows, the arching and rounding of the back. Again, you could simply lay down on your mat, take forward rest and relax the head, the hands and the feet. Take these several moments in between the poses to recover, to move and respond to the sensations that you get coming out of that pose. And again, we're gonna continue that good pranayama, that good breath control, even in this time of transition. All right, I'm hoping you guys have some props available to make this uh, doable. But because that was a backbending pose, we'll take a restorative posture that really is, um, it's a great way to release the lower back tension. So traditionally, when we take this posture together, we lay on the belly, we use a bolster, and we sort of drape the leg up over the bolster. It could support the ankle, it doesn't necessarily have to. So again, maybe a couple of pillows underneath and taking a rest on the floor. Options for the arms, right? You might have your arms out in T position. Um, you might feel that particularly in um, the opposite arm, right? You might take this cheek to the floor. You might take the arm down, right? So playing with arm position what you might have for the leg. Maybe you don't have a bolster or rolled up blanket works just fine, right? Just getting a little elevation and trying to keep those hips flat on the floor and chest flat on the floor as well. So just a little bit of lift in the one leg, belly relaxed, breathing deeply. So again, taking that back bending posture into one that really um, softens through the lower back and um, very supported by the earth beneath you softening and opening up through the pelvic girdle. So again, your arms might be out in T position. You might have them in cactus arms. You might turn your head to one side. You might take the second side. So many different options or variations. You might have one arm up and one arm down, right? The leg that's, that's down, you might take that arm down. So just see what feels good because again, we're letting the earth open the pelvis. We have the earth opening and supporting the chest no matter what position you take. Um, and that's twist in the neck, right? Creating a little bit of um, energy moving through the cervical spine, the neck. And just wherever you are, breathing well, expanding and contracting. 
And so again, this is one of those postures because we're laying on the belly and the chest, we're breathing into the back body. Remember, we've talked a lot recently about upper respiratory disease and how important good pranayama, good respiratory health is. Um, and this is a great way to do that. We're never going to breathe into the back of our lungs in our normal everyday comings and goings. And so when we get the opportunity to really fill up that part of the lungs and breathe deep all the way from the lowest part of the, the lung capacity all the way up to the top and just expel all of that out when we exhale. Valuable tools, valuable tools, not only in the yoga practice, but just in general to have, um, take some time uh, regularly to do some sort of breath work. As we approach the two and a half minute mark, the halfway there, again, think about where we started in this sort of scanning of the body and noticing maybe tension in the hands, tension in the jaw, tension through the eyes. Maybe the, the lower back or mid back is a little irritated by the last posture. See about paying attention to that area and breathing deeply wherever that is that you're feeling some tension. Maybe it just needs your attention and you taking that moment to scan and then you go, oh, I didn't realize, you know, I was clenching my fists or um, in this posture, it might be squeezing your glutes really tight, right? Um, your quads could be engaged and you don't even realize um, that your body sort of responded that way. So it's that inward journey, that inward awareness. That's why the distractions outside of you really need to be to a minimum and we need to really disengage with that so that we can have this internal experience. You're just at three and a half minutes. Softening the eyes and the lower jaw, making any adjustments or changes. Maybe you had your head turned to one side, maybe you wanna take a few breaths on the other side. If you want to change the position of your arms. You have just about 30 more seconds of long deep breathing here. As you take your last several deep breaths here, just really slowly maybe shift up and straighten out that bent knee. When you are in your forward rest, you might find it nice to come to hands and knees, take some cat cows. You might feel nice about taking a downward facing dog and kind of moving around here. You might want to get onto your back, hug your knees, move around a little bit. Um, windshield wipers could feel nice, right? That swaying of the knees side to side. Breathing and moving in any way that feels supportive to you. And remember the idea is that we do intentionally stress our body in these yin yoga poses, um, finding the softest um, muscles that we can. And so all the stress goes on those tendons, ligaments, and fascia, that deeper connective, more sort of plastic tissue. And so we put that nice tug and that constant hold. 
And so when we release, then we have to bring in some movement, move blood and energy and um, nutrients through those areas that we just put that stress on. And some of the postures may seem um, a little easier or more attainable for you. One side might feel really good and the other side not in some of these postures, but that's all part of that process. And um, when you're doing your own yoga practice or yin in particular at home, and you find one side holds a lot more tension than the other, then just take your yin yoga posture and maybe do five minutes on one side and seven on the other. There's the point we're looking for is balance, right? So if my one side needs more attention, it needs more attention and it should get it. All right, setting yourself up for your second side. Again, you could use a blanket, a bolster, a couple of pillows. Maybe you have none of those things, or maybe you just have some little tiny pillow. Again, even that is just fine. What we're looking to do is get that knee up and elevated. And so that when I roll myself back down, set my hips, I've got this space here where that hip starts to open and the pelvic girdle starts to flatten again. And again, taking the midline, the belly and chest to the floor, options with the arms, your cactus arms, your arms in T position. You might take this arm that's um, on the bent leg and drop it forward. You'll see my shoulder drop down. You could take one sheet to the floor and then the other, adding variation. Um, the one thing that I will often remind you that we want to try to do in a good yin yoga practice is get to that state of almost um, a meditation really that um, you're lost in the posture again we get to that place of discomfort and then all we do is just breathe well right let the let the body just let go and take care of itself um, and again, that will happen with taking a moment for that um, mind-body connection, noticing where you're holding on to stuff, and then just letting it sort of melt away. It becomes um, something in the background at that point and not something for you to attach to and get frustrated by. I remember early on in um, my journey into yoga, I would come to the mat and I would have this anticipation of I've already got back pain. This is going to hurt worse. Oh, uh, you know, and so I would I would build up all these um, ideas of what my practice was going to look like, how it was going to feel, how frustrated I was going to be, how disappointed I was going to be. And I can guarantee you, when we start telling ourselves these stories before we even hit the mat. That is exactly what's going to come true. That is exactly what's going to happen because you've already decided it so. So in that same vein, and many of us would agree with that. So in that same vein, can I not decide that my practice is going to be good today and that I'm going to accept whatever it is and that too will come into fruition or come to be true? You know, many of us, I, I know for me, I, I can know very clearly that when I take a negative approach or a, a, an approach of anxiousness or disappointment um, into something, that's exactly what I get. So if I believe that to be true, can I not believe um, that resting in this and settling in and letting it happen on its own without me trying to control it, How you know, if the negative of that is true, then the positive of that must also be true. The yin and the yang, right? <laughs> the light and the dark. You are just over two and a half minutes. So forgive yourself when you've attached to some idea or expectation. Um, and I said it earlier today in, in another um, practice that I want to come into my practice with curiosity and wonder and let it just sort of evolve without me dictating what it's going to look like or how it's going to feel today. Let it be new each time you roll out the mat. We're just at three and a half minutes.
we doing on breathing? Did we forget about how we were breathing? If so, just go back to the technique, back to the practice. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale, one, two, three, four. And let's begin to take our last several breaths here. And whatever you find the safest way to come out of your pose, maybe it's moving the prop, maybe it's rolling up a little bit to be able to straighten your leg. And straighten that bent knee. And again, maybe you're in forward rest, maybe you're taking some cat cows, a downward facing dog, laying on your back, hugging your knees, windshield wipers, anything that feels good. But please, please, please take the time in between the postures to really move and navigate through what your body is telling you in response to the pose you just took. All right, when you're ready, we'll come up to seated for just a moment so we can talk about where we're going next. Um, we're gonna do um, reclined butterfly. So this will give us another um, little bit of a back bend and um, continue to open the hips. So if you've got the block and the bolster, that's what that looks like. And then we can lay over that. That's gonna give you a great elevation off the floor. If you don't have that, but you got a couple of pillows, that's great as well. If you don't have any of those, and again, maybe you just got a blanket, we're gonna roll up that blanket and lay that down on the mat. So either one of those two ideas of props, get this out of the way. And remember when we come into, so um, but butterfly is the soles of the feet coming together and the knees out wide. So that's how my legs are gonna go. Now, if you've got some hip, hip issues or knee issues that make that difficult, then make sure you adjust accordingly. You could also use something underneath uh, the knees to give you support here. But again, the idea is to get a little bit of a back bend. So even if I've got just a blanket rolled up, I'm gonna leave it right close to my lumbar spine, trying to leave my pelvis on the floor. So you'll see I get a nice little uh, back bend here. If your blanket's long enough to hold your head great, if not, maybe you need something else here. I've got a little bit of elevation off the floor so I can get some more opening in my chest. I'm gonna let my hips and my pelvis open up. Again, arms maybe just softly resting at your side. If you need a couple of, you know, kind of movement through the shoulders before you sort of settle supporting underneath the knees if you need it, supporting underneath the head if you need it. If you're in um, and you've got props that allow you to turn your head to one side, you may turn your head to one side to add the cervical spine into this, um, this posture. But just let the pelvis open up. Gravity sort of doing the work here for you for those inner thighs and pelvis. Nice gentle little back bend going on. And again, maybe a bit of a cervical um, twist there too, if that's reasonable and accessible. So just again, settling in. Our first posture we did today, melting heart, really grounded the energy of the heart. It was um, submitting or surrendering our heart to the earth. And here we are in this position, really submitting or surrendering our heart to, to God, to the universe, to the upward and outward energy around us. If at any point that makes you anxious, um, it might feel nice to take uh, your right hand on your belly and your left hand on your heart and just settle with that. Um, and remember 
with your full breath, right? Belly, ribs, chest, expanding and contracting. Expanding and contracting. So shoulders stay broad across the front of the chest. And just breathe. going to let you settle into this posture with my silence. Don't worry about the time. I'll come back and let you know when we're at five minutes. We're just at two and a half minutes. Got just about one more minute. Just want to remind you to breathe well. To relax and let go. Your last several deep breaths. And when you feel ready, you're going to need to probably take those hands down underneath the thighs and take an inhale to lift those legs back to center. Once you're at center with the feet on the floor, you may sway the knees side to side, sort of taking those windshield wipers. You might take the feet out wide and tip the knees in towards each other. That can feel really nice. You might want to sit up and take a forward fold, gathering the legs together. Child's pose might seem reasonable sort of bringing yourself into this tight little ball. There is no right or wrong in what you do to recover. You just listen to your body and organically move with your breath, right? Let, if you're taking um, 
movement, use the inhales to those, for those postures where you're expanding and those exhales when you're sort of settling in or folding in half. So again, anything, a good downward facing dog, hands and knees for cat cows. Um, yeah, just anything forward fold, again, might feel really nice on your back if you had a good elevation and a nice little back bend again. Take just another minute here to really move through anything that came up during that posture. And then when you're ready, whatever you've got for support, um, some of you may be able to lay down on the floor, but let's just see what, um, what the deer pose brings for us today. I was asked to, to incorporate that in practice today, so I will, I will honor that and do that. So I'm going to sit on my right hip and I'm going to call this my feet towards the back of my mat, my um, support up front. So in deer pose, essentially we get the legs sort of in a swastika position. For those of you that this is new to, this is essentially the position my legs will be in as I'm laying down with my right knee bent. If I'm sitting on my right hip at a 90 degree angle. You see, I don't want to bring my knee up too far because then I lose the space up front to be able to twist. So shin parallel to the side of your mat. And on my left leg, my knee is at a 90 degree angle and my shin is parallel to the back of my mat. So remember, this is a twisting posture where we're going to lift and twist and lay down. But I don't want to just start from here and turn and lay down. Then I've lost all of this length that I could be creating. So I'm going to press in and I'm going to lift up first. I'm taking this left hip and rolling it forward. Oftentimes, once we do that, you'll feel the muscles in the back of the glutes and thigh engage and hold on. And if that's the case, pause for a moment. So as we turn to come to the front of the mat and lay down, you may find that you're not twisting very far and you're not going to be able to lay down on your chest. If that's you, just lay down on your right side. All right, so I might lay here. I might leave my arm hanging off the back. My left arm here, I might drape over my back. I might leave it in front. Whatever feels good, right? I might be working on that turning my belly. I'm going to go ahead and start the timer for our five minutes and give you some other ideas for modifications, etc. So as I lay myself down, I might just begin laying with my right cheek because that's gonna feel easier than if I were to turn my head and take my left cheek. My left hand just resting here softly and I can allow my shoulder to soften and open. However, what you can't see on the other side, I could start off just like this laying on my mat but I might drop my right arm along the side so that my right shoulder then gets to fall forward and relax. So that's another option for you here. Just wherever you are, think about that spine being really long, the low back and the hip being soft, chest open if you're able to lay down on your chest and let there be as much support as you need in the front. You can always start to peel those layers away, right? As you settle into the pose, you can sink down a little further, a little further. We give the body time to respond and surrender and get a little softer as you sit in that posture, right? Deep breathing, good pranayama. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale, one, two, three, four, keeping that breath going, moving energy through the body, the chi or the prana, the life force. It's, it rides the river, the waves of breath. So we want to keep the breath nice and full. Remembering there's a lot going on in the lower half of the body, which is essentially our yin yoga practice, but don't forget about the chest, neck, shoulders, space, all that good stuff, right? So I want to, again, stay broad across the front of my chest if I'm laying on my chest. If I'm on my side, 
stay broad to the side waist, right? Um, hands and fingers, tension free, soft. The expression on the face, soft. Eyes, just gently closed. Focusing primarily on your breathing, reminding yourself to inhale, to exhale. struggling with that crazy busy mind today, maybe use a mantra. If just focusing on the breath is not, is not um, really bringing you where you wanna be, um, take a word or a phrase that you can repeat over and over in your mind. Um, you could use a traditional Sanskrit mantra, um, Om Gam Ganapata Ye Namaha, um, chanting to Ganesh, the remover of obstacles. Om Shanti 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 Hi chanting for peace but it might be a, a favorite piece of scripture um, you know something that has spoken to you over the years and um, you know just something simple like be still and know that i am god resting in that right? or again maybe just a motivational phrase to help you stay present be still and be present anything that keeps you in that internal focus you're just at three and a half minutes Whatever um, sort of experience you're having today in your yoga practice, let it bring a smile to your face because the time and the intention, the attention it takes for you to roll out your mat, to make your space, to be present, that in itself is something to smile about. That in itself is something to be cherished. our stillness, our sort of sanctuary on the mat in this space. Whatever's going on around you, it doesn't matter. You're on your sacred space. Last several deep breaths on this side. And please, as you rise, take a moment to get those hands back under your shoulders. Spread your fingers. Use your inhale to press into the earth and rise up. As you exhale, you're going to start that process of unwinding. And you may find yourself um, facing the end of your mat. Maybe it feels good to just uh, exhale and lay down. Maybe straighten out those legs. Maybe shake them out. Maybe a long stretch from your fingers to your toes. Anything that feels good to relieve any sensations that came up while taking your pose on that side. Um, again, I, I know that it, I get requests for that posture a lot. And I think um, one of the reasons why is because it involves so much. It involves the spine. It involves the chest. It involves the hips, the outer edge of your thigh, the IT band. There's so much going on, low back, right? Um, just a really great therapeutic um, posture. And can be really supportive, right? When we use um, things to, to help us get in that posture and to rest in it, can just be really um, very restorative in nature. So I know I do get a request for that one a lot. And I haven't talked a lot about it today, but um, for me as, as your instructor, facilitator, um, reminding you that your foundations, how you get into the poses, whether it's in this style of practice or gentle or a vinyasa flow style of class, those foundations, the um, how you set yourself up matters so, so much. So take your time to prepare your space. And remember that um, just because a posture felt one way or it had an experience on one side, it could be completely different. So I'm going to turn on my mat. If it's easier for you to just turn in the opposite direction, that's totally up to you. So again, I'm going to start with the same supports and I'm going to see what happens. So on this side, if I'm sitting on my left hip, my left shin is parallel to the side of the mat. 
and my right knee, I wanna push it back so that if I were to take my arms straight out, I've got my wrist even with my knee, my elbow and my hip, so I've got this nice straight line. And again, um, keeping those knees separated, legs separated, and again, finding that lift first and starting that process of turning. And once you start that process, notice how the body's responding. And maybe you're okay here, but as soon as you start to lay down, everything starts to kind of grab and tighten up. And if that's the case, just stop for a moment or two. Take a few breaths. We're asking the body to accept being put into a very uncomfortable situation. And it will accept it if we give it time, right? And we breathe into it. So again, if you're not able to come and lay down on the chest, you just simply lay down on the side body. I would take my arm across the back of my support and let that shoulder soften. Again, the right arm could go in front. It could drape over the back, your choice there. But again, if you're able, turning and laying down onto your belly, and once on the belly, the arms again could be a cactus arms. You could take the left arm and bring it down so that the arms sort of match the legs. And again, it's gonna be easiest to have the left cheek um, on your prop first. If it feels okay at some point, you might lift the head and look over your shoulder to the left. But again, being honest with ourselves about where our edges are and um, Again, we do want to be on those edges. We want to, uh, again, the practice of yin yoga is intentionally stressing um, the fascia and the connective tissue. So unlike a restorative practice, this one can be a bit challenging. And that's why, to me, the use of props, doesn't matter if you're at home or you're in a yoga studio, anything you can do to support your body in whatever posture and whatever way your body needs. Um, whether it's padding or lifting the earth up to meet you, um, that's when the muscles can go. You know, that's when the muscles of the body don't feel like they have to do such an intense job of holding you up and keeping you out of trouble, because that's what they're doing. <laughs> they're trying to keep us out of trouble. And so when we free the body up to soften, that's when the benefits come. And when we free the crazy mind from feeling like it has to stay in this wheel, this cycle of thoughts, when we start to slow it down, what a relief. You know, our minds aren't meant to be multitasking every day, all the time, constantly going. Um, so these times that we get to sit in, in particular yoga, the yin practice, and ah, uh, mind and body just really letting go, really settling in. You're just over two and a half minutes, so you're halfway there. Adjustments, changes, modifications, easing out early if you need to, all acceptable. And really the only wrong way to do a yin yoga practice is without good intention. Um, without the ability to, or the willingness, I should say, um, to just accept. You know, when your body says, I, I can't do this anymore, then we have to accept that. I hope you're finding that each of these poses really um, since some restoration and mind-body awareness that you were really hoping for today. You know, we can set intentions for our practices. And the intentions are just simply to call out something positive into fruition. And with a, a positive intention comes acceptance. And um, hopefully your practice has brought you a little bit of that today. There's a little bit of um, self-control, um, courage, a little bit of strength and conviction in a yin yoga practice. 
that hopefully we can take into our everyday lives and let it carry us through some other obstacles maybe in our lives. You know, there's often times in our lives when we're faced with an uncomfortable situation that's unavoidable. And that's precisely what we've done to ourselves in a yin yoga practice, put ourselves in a situation that is definitely uncomfortable. Um, and we learn how to breathe through it, to walk through it with grace and to come through on the other side, um, feeling better. And if we could do that with the trials and the struggles in our everyday life, right? Last several deep breaths. Remember when coming out of this and all our yoga yin yoga poses, we do real slow. So taking those hands maybe back underneath your shoulders, that press in, rise up. The exhale, starting that process of unwinding. <clears throat> Again, it might feel good to straighten this leg. It might feel good to lay down over your props. It might feel good to take windshield wipers or you're swaying your knees side to side. You could leave your feet out wide and drop your knees in towards each other, sort of internally rotating those femur bones. That could feel good. Again, there's no right or wrong um, way to come into opposite postures. Just do what feels good. Just do what feels good. All right, take your time, keep moving. The last thing I wanna finish with today is, um, and it's not really traditional yin yoga, but um, I think it is prudent and important. We are, a lot of us are having very stagnant uh, time right now and um, not being able to get out and do a whole lot of things. So um, a lot of um, pulling down the ankle. So I wanna get the legs up. I wanna get the legs up over our heads. So if you're fortunate enough to have, um, we're gonna stay like a good three minutes or so. So if you're fortunate enough to have wall space to get your legs up the wall, great, do that. Maybe there's a bed or a couch nearby that you could um, get like your thighs on, which would help give you some support. And if you don't have any of those options, a rolled up blanket would be just fine or a block if you've got one. <clears throat> Excuse me. So again, the idea is that I'm gonna get my legs up over my heart and I'm gonna leave them there for a good three minutes. All right, so if I don't have a wall or something to support me, I'm gonna take something to lift my hips and again, preferably at the sacrum, so it's past the lumbar spine at that nice triangular heart-shaped bone at the bottom. And then all I wanna do is get my legs straight up in the sky. Let me start a timer because you're all gonna be here forever. Two legs straight up. And again, they're not coming forward, they're straight up out of the hips. And I think with the support underneath the low back, three minutes is definitely doable, but if you find that's not working for you, you can come down. You might just lay on your back in Shavasana position. But again, I would really encourage you if you can to get your legs up over your heart. All the fluids and um, toxins that pool in the ankles and the feet now have a chance to come back to the body, the organs get processed, cleansed, and refreshed. You'll get rid of some edema here in the feet and the ankles. Again, just resting in this position, the arms might be soft along the side. You might take advantage again of turning the head to one side and then to the other. Just breathing still, good pranayama, belly, ribs, and upper part of the chest, expanding and contracting, moving energy. This feels good, I think I'm gonna stay here with you. Mm. I want you to really allow yourself the softness of the muscles in the chest, the 
points of the shoulders, even through the collarbones, just letting the back of the shoulder blades get heavy. Feeling even the skin and the muscles across the jawline and the neckline heavy and sort of melting back into the earth. Can you feel the same the softness of the muscles through the cheeks and the eyes and the forehead sort of peeling away and melting into the earth beneath you? That's the softness we're looking for. I was going to stop us at two and a half minutes or three minutes, but I think we're going to go to four. If you need to come down early, go ahead and come down early. Again, I know this is not a traditional yin pose, but I felt that it was necessary today. So we're giving it a whirl. And so we have just under one more minute here. Again, if the legs become shaky or this becomes difficult because you don't have a wall or something to support you, just come down. Maybe you take your feet down and just stay in sort of a little baby bridge pose like that. That's fine too. Last 20 seconds. When you're ready, instead of just dropping the legs to the floor, let's stretch out those hip flexors. So as we often do, again, I know this is not traditional yin, but you know, I'm not the traditional kind of girl sometimes. Hang on to the right leg and draw that knee outside the rib cage towards your armpit. Give it a nice big hug. Take that left leg, pointed toe, exhale, dropping the leg until it's just above the floor and just hover for a moment, getting really long in the front of that left hip. We're holding on tight to the right leg, tucking it in outside the rib cage to the armpit. You're still breathing really well. Good, when you're ready, exhale, hug both knees. Into the chest, but outside towards the rib cage. Good. Coming back to ease up, switch the grip to the left leg. Again, the knee is more outside the rib cage towards your armpit. And let's find length first. So we'll straighten the right leg up tall, point the toe, exhale, reaching as far away from the body as you can. And you're coming till you're just above the floor. Most times we don't even know where the floor is. So just keep going till you feel the floor, then lift ever so slightly and hold here. Breathing deep into the front of that right hip. Couple more nice breaths. When you're ready, exhale, hugging both knees into the chest, outside the rib cage. Releasing softly, letting the feet come to the floor. If it's reasonable for you, you might want to hang on to your prop if you need to. Straightening both legs. If both legs at one time doesn't feel good, just do one at a time. Just let the feet fall away from each other. Breathe again. One more last little back bend. Great hip opener here. So as and, and um, hip flexor muscles opening up the hips. Several deep breaths here. When you're ready, two legs and bending knees, feet on the floor. Whatever props you have underneath you, just lift ever so slightly to take those out. 
And let's take one forward fold before we come into Shavasana. And <clears throat> let's let this forward fold be about the low back as opposed to the hamstring. So maybe your legs are crossed when you fold, maybe they're bent. But get long in your spine and exhale, fold, releasing the entire lumbar spine. <clears throat> Take a few moments there to stretch out a little bit, to breathe. And then, yeah, it's Shavasana. It's your final resting time. So make your way to a comfortable position on your back, completely supported for your corpse pose, your shavasana, your much deserved final rest. So again, take your a few moments. Um, I don't have control over your environment where you are, so I'm not sure if it's a cooler environment, but the practice of yin can definitely be cooler. So if you're feeling a little chilly, go ahead and put something on uh, a blanket or sweatshirt or socks or things like that, that really make your resting posture special. Supporting the back of the neck, the head, the hips, the knees. Um, letting the breath return to natural breath, that breath without effort. The body is breathing itself. Relax the eyes and the tension in the lower jaw. Take the last several moments in rest. Let your mind sit quiet. I'll let you know when it's time to come back.
Begin to add depth back into your breathing. Allow your senses to once again reach out into your space. Subtle movements, maybe just starting with the fingers and the toes and the wrists and the ankles. Eventually movements that are bigger. Maybe if you feel good about it, stretch from your fingers to your toes, arms reaching overhead and take those big inhales through the nose and open the mouth and exhale really deeply. Maybe you're hugging the knees into the chest. Maybe you're rolling around on your back a little bit. Maybe those windshield wipers feel good. And you feel like you've moved around sufficiently to um, revive the body. Take a moment, if you would, to roll to your left side. Rolling on the left side, the yin side, grounding that energy and pausing for a moment to feel gratitude and contentment. when you feel ready, take that right hand and use the earth, press downward into the earth as you inhale and begin to rise up. Coming back to a seated position where you can pause for a moment with me and seal in all this really good energy. And if you'd like to join me, I'll chant the sound of Om to finish our time. And we'll start by taking Anjali Mudra. This is the joining of the yin and the yang together. And we take that union of the masculine and the feminine, the solar and the lunar, et cetera, and we bring it to the heart center. And here we let the fingers rise up and reach outward and upward for the divine, for the universal energy, the universal consciousness. And to show ourselves and, and our higher power, respect and honor, we might gently lower the chin. Allow yourself a smile here. And if you'd like to join me, let's inhale fully. Thank you so much, dear ones, for inviting me into your home, into your space, and uh, sharing some of your time with me. It is a great honor and a pleasure. And so I get to see you again next time I do wish you well. Namaste.